classic horror trope there. So uh, tonight's show is uh, just kind of designed around games revolving around vampires. Uh, anyway, uh, to start things off, we're probably going to have one of the more notable games uh, involving vampires. We're going to be having the Vampire, the Masquerade, Bloodlines, with etc. Take it away. Yo, thank you so much. Yes, Vampire, the Masquerade, Bloodlines. Um, we get some good vampire horror. It's going to be good. We should jump straight into it. I'll explain one of the uh, the meta techs, as it were, and uh, we shall get straight into the game. So to begin with, oh, it's worth mentioning, we're going to be playing as any percent uh, Nosferatu. So we are this hideous, deformed figure right here, hunching over, really playing up to the horror trope. Anyway, the trick is with the character sheet is you would just click on allocate all your stat points. You'd go back to plan, reselect Nosferatu, and you can keep allocating points like this and just, you know, max things out that way. So you sort of like God mode straight from the start. Anyway, I've got a save. So to save us all from watching that, uh, we shall just load that instead. Bear me two seconds. Okie dokie. Righty tighty. I shall count down from three and on go. I think the time will start. So, three, two, one, go. Okie dokie. Right. So, it starts out. We are a fledgling kindred, like we just get embraced and turn into a vampire. And we're going to wake up in our oh God, Santa Monica apartment, which is looking a bit like a, the kind of thing you'd see Adam Stanhite living in from Saw. It's not exactly the most eloquent of living. <laughs> um, we skip the tutorial of Smiling Jack, which is going to take 100 bucks from our drawers, and we're going to go buy a lockpick. Now, the lockpick will help us sequence break quite a lot. Uh, with it being a Source Engine game, there's a lot of uh, movement regarding, like, bunny hopping and air strafes, but also you get some interesting collision with things like the lockpick, so you can actually, you know, sequence break things a little bit. Anyway, the whole thing is honestly just basically a glitch exhibition, because <laughs> that little cutscene where we saw that dude, um, like, crawling into that room, we're supposed to be going to see him first. Uh, his name's Mercurio. He gives us our introduction sort of quest, but we're not going to be doing that. Okay. Huh? This looks good, I think. So, when we first enter Asylum, we're going to bring up the inventory to sort of like, so we can actually see, you know, like cancel the fade in. But what that's going to do is let us run in fast enough so we can actually talk to that girl at the bar. And in this version of the game, there's like a scripted conversation with Jeanette, that Harley Quinn looking character. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's going to, by us jumping on her head, it's going to move over to the elevator. And that's going to be useful uh, because it's going to set up the, like one of, well, the big sequ uh, sequence break for Santa Monica. Now, this area is the Ocean Health Hotel. I keep calling it the Lakeside Hotel because I'm a fool. Uh, it's a bit of a tonal shift, to be quite honest, because the first, you know, couple of hours of the game, you're still getting used to, you know, how the game plays, what you're supposed to be doing, who, there's all, who all these characters are. Um, and then you get this super, I guess, not so much jarring, but very unexpected, scripted, like, sequence through this hotel that is haunted by a victim well, what's about ghost who was murdered by, like, a presumed, uh, husband, because the, the law behind it is a bit, not silly, but, you know, very cliche. Anyway, horror elements are here for sure. <laughs> We've got this whole scripted sequence. We can't really get out of it any faster than this. This sucks. Dude. <laughs> My way out was blocked. That's, uh, thank you, Source. Very cool. Be careful. All right. I took a little more damage than I would actually liked it, but it's fine. We can always use a blood pack. You're not supposed to, pull to you, sorry, you're not supposed to actually be able to open this door, but from the right angle, you can just like jar it open, but it's, it saves a few seconds towards the end of this level. 
My helps are a little tragic, but it's not like the worst thing in the world. I put it down to the fact I've uh, just woken up. <laughs> I will use a blood pack here just to restore some health because you've got a very good chance of. Well, you take some pretty big damage through there. That little hallway, if you're not like mindful of your HP, you can just die, which is. You know, sure, it's not long into the run, but it's just you don't want to be dying needlessly if you can avoid it, especially if you haven't made any like quick saves or anything. <laughs> okay, so that was the Ocean House Hotel. And now we'll be seeing that, uh, what that setup was earlier with Jeanette and how it like factors in. Fun fact um, you can actually maintain momentum with your hops and just like glide all the way through this little tunnel pipe, but the movement is pretty precise. Okay. That is unfortunate. She did not run over there. Okay. This is fine because what we're going to do needs to be. I do have a save. I can just load it to push her in the way. Yep. We will do that actually. Elevator skip. Whoa. So she should land around here, right? There's a lot of uh, dialogue mesh in this, but She's always this is fine. Also, if it's weirdly Hi. quiet for, for us being in a club, that is because I do actually have the music muted. It, is, uh, it will get the pod muted and everything, so it's just a detective kind of thing more than anything. But you would actually I have... Uh, what's the song called? Isolated by Chiasm? Chiasm? Might be butchering the pronunciation on that, and people are just like funking the entire time. <laughs> okay, that's what you would expect. You would um, have Jeanette arrive at the elevator, you rush through the dialogue with her, and then you would activate the elevator from the inside, which will trigger that dialogue that's happening in the top left corner that you can see through the uh, stuff that would like between the muff muffled voices. I don't think it looks pretty goofy with people just like vibing, funking around with no music. <laughs> anyway, we jump through the ceiling because we're within Therese's uh, not like hitbox, but like her range of like interaction, I guess. With her myself. Just do what I ask. All right. Another. This is where the lockpick is going to help us. A little bit because as we leave this door well leave this elevator we're going to drop a lockpick in between the uh, the shutters that is not going to work uh, okay that's fine i'm so glad i made safety saves <laughs> if you drop it too far out it won't actually block the shutters and you'll just be greeted with sadness when you come back this might be a little early, but we'll try it. So we're going to head over to the diner and uh, placate some thugs. Uh, now, there is a little trick here that you've got to be mindful of, which is if you um, don't kill these guys fast enough and you don't pick up the phone within the first ring, you get stuck with a little error message saying, oh, uh, you can't interact with this because you're in combat. And that will cost like 15 seconds or something, which is such a stupid way to lose time, but... Um... Okay. So by placing that lockpick between those doors and then picking the lockpick up, but also like body blocking the shutters, the game logic is a little confused, like, okay, well, I'm supposed to be open, um, so let's just like reopen the elevator and what would happen is there's a flag that would be set as you do this game normally as soon as oh. i don't listen oh, she's shut ran up. towards me this time this is gonna Isn't look goofy <laughs> you don't anyway there's a flag that would be set from a previous quest don't that we don't I set taken... because right? obviously we're secret breaking and you're a... i don't think trust anyway this we've got like what 40 50 seconds of dialogue here just that's a as i recall why it is just mashing dialogue it's fine it's pretty important that you do enter the right uh dialogue inputs though because you, you can save one twin over the other 
which is a yes, lot slower. When I was a because happier. what happens when you save them both is you get teleported no, outside I'll of stop. the That's nightclub. We know. Obviously a lot faster Take than it. having Virgin's to wander down through the elevator yourself. Right. We will now be going to the Sabat warehouse. There's nothing too in-depth with it. It's just purely movement and execution with the Sabat warehouse. And, you know, oh, it can I've be good, but... It can also be an yes, absolute I, disaster, but here, with Nosferatu, we've got go. this plane called Obfuscate, which will turn us invisible, uh, which should save us from uh, making any major mistake, at least. Okay. So we're going to come up right here. Wow. Okay. Jump and Obfuscate. Nice. Let's see, do I have the hops? Do we have the moves? Not bad. Up on this environment. Now, one of the quests that we skipped would have netted us an item called the Astrolite, which is sort of like um, an armed explosive. Now, we didn't do that quest, but because we're in this area, the game's like, yeah, well, you're here, so you've got to have done it. It's under, for instance, where, you know, the game's not so much scripted, but it's kind of like just the games that know how to behave without uh, like defined logic. <clears throat> Good old Beck it appears, and we're about done with Santa Monica, which is pretty decent. Your I tell me, most of pleasure. Okay. So, as the Nosferatu was so hideous that we can't actually, you know, catch a taxi and jump between the different hubs, what we've got to do is travel through the sewers. So instead of, you know, getting a lift with our homie, we have to go through the squalor. <laughs> Excuse me, sorry. Right, we've got like a two minute long cutscene which is just basically dialogue mashing so if there is uh, any message or anything or if I, like anything you'd want to say then now is a perfect time for it let's drain it let's take it no you're all good uh, i guess so what made you want to run this game a lot of fun with this um, one. what made you want to Make run this game up our so, and get away with it I, I casually played through the game um, to begin with, and I thought, you know what, it's it's fun, it's fine. And then I looked at the speedrun, it was like 27 minutes at a time for, for world record. Like, okay, there is some... There's got to be something at work here that I'm just wildly unaware of, and it was the tech, which was definitely interesting. Like, um, there's one major sequence break that I really wanted to learn. Like, you know, I'm going to learn that, I may as well learn the rest of the run. Um, the major sequence break that made me like more like roughly learn it was um, Hollywood Skip, which we will get to. Um, Leave. Also, force movement, bunny hopping, air strafing is it's always quite nice to watch yeah. it done right. Well, I say right, <laughs> done well, and um, occasionally I have runs where it's like, yeah, I'm feeling it. <laughs> Shoot us. Uh, as well, I guess just a general question. Um, I guess we'll more in depth potentially. You. Uh, why Nosferatu and not any other characters? Ooh, I like this question. Dead. So, Nobody Nosferatu are the fastest for a couple of reasons. So, there's the discipline side of it, which is like their special ability. So, the obfuscate turns sure invisible, like you. obviously useful for avoiding mobs. Potence gives you um, unmitigate. Good this can be hard to say. Unmitigatable damage. So, bosses like uh, Ming Zhao, for you example, like will take increased damage from your melee Should hits. Um, this Animalism is, is good for DPS, Stay but also trouble, Nosferatu have like, well, the male Nosferatu have quite a big character model. So actually building momentum with air strafing is pretty fast, but overall Nosferatu are just faster uh, over other clans. Like you've got, um, we've got on the SRC leaderboards, we've got any percent for Premier and Nosferatu and Gangrel. You showed up. Now, you got the difference between them is like some skips out. are doable or easier than others. So with Nosferatu and Gangle, you can do all the tech. You can do um, Grout Skip, you can do Hollywood Skip. You can't do Grout Skip as Tremere because one of your disciplines does 
uh, not have a hitbox for us to jump on it, and which would be a frame for the trick we will get to. Um, it's just, man. There, there's a few intricacies to really determine what makes Nosferatu the fastest clan for it. But honestly, those are like there secondary are. reasons. Most I just think Nosferatu is pretty neat. Done well. <laughs> you may. There have been. The police are now. You have. Do not. The last thing. Good. They're the happened. ugliest of now, the bunch. <laughs> good. Good. There's a boat waiting for you on the beach in Santa Monica. Okay, right. So that was Prince LaCroix. And now he's going to give us a bunch of fetch quests. Uh, we're going to go to... Well, we're going to go back to Santa Monica and go to the pier. I'm going to start the overarching narrative of the game, which is the Ankaran Sarcophagus. Which will house, like, a, an antediluvian vampire, which is sort of like a third generation demigod, pretty much. Like, anyone that has, like, the power of said antediluvian will rule over LA big time. Ah. Unfortunately, like the main, I'd say the main horror aspect of VTMB is pretty much already done with. Because um, the Ocean House Hotel is very much like as spooky as the game gets. But it then also comes down to what, you know, what makes this game good besides the run, which is casually it's really really engaging very spooky in some of its undertones and the, the writing and the characterization of how some people just are also yeah i just remembered so well i say remember there's someone in chat that just points out um vtmv2 recently got an announcement for like a release date and play style and everything and i am cautiously optimistic i think um that's like the best attitude to have for it going forward. And hopefully we'll still get Nosferatu as uh, a base clan and Sorry, it isn't like uh, Day Zero DLC, but I won't say anything else on that. <laughs> Alright. So fetch quest done. We're going to go and return to Prince of Croy, and then we've got a... We've got what is for me the run killer. Uh, we've got a tick, a, a tick, a tech called um, Bat Jump or Grouchscape, however you'd like to refer to it, uh, which is a frame perfect trick that will use one of our disciplines, uh, specifically Bloodsucker's Communion, to um, elevate ourselves to a second floor, which will save us about 100 seconds, maybe the better part of two minutes, just running around Grouch Mansion. I've said all I need to for now. How convenient. He says all that, I've, that he needs to. We turn up. What is he cooking? One of my I'm losing. Oh, another thing that's worth mentioning is okay. um, a very Those small each my yes. tech. When we hear which from is Grouch, there's only two cutscenes where it works. Um you can bring up the inventory and close it, so you can actually like regain control of your character during scripted cutscenes where you're not be able to post be able to like interact. So this is one of them. You, no, you should get. Yeah, you're not supposed to be able to move during that. It looks so goofy, like interacting with another character like that. Okay. Wish me luck, team. This is it. This is uh, the hardest skip in the game, if you ask me. So we've got to lure this dude over to a bookcase, jump on his head, and then we'll uh, cast Bloodsuckers Cleaning on him. Okay. Should be good. Nope. Third try for sure. Man. I'd know a trick is famed for a, uh, a frame perfect one. Don't worry, the speeder won't be sure to mention it. <laughs> 
It is tricky. Like, if you can get this, like, relative, well, I say relatively consistent, it's, it honestly does just feel like luck. Big skill issue time. I would say this is probably, yeah, like I said, this is the, the run killer part of it for me. Oh man, this is brutal. This probably sounds awful on your end, like, it's just the discipline. Okay. We got this. Okay, we'll redo that setup. Maybe the maybe it's just not lined up decent, but Hey, hold it. I believe. Wow, we First try, watch this. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> that might also be a bit too late of a setup. This is gnarly. Thing is, we've not even like started to get the jump, so I'm... there we go. Okay, right. <laughs> that might just about break even with the time it's supposed to save. <laughs> um, that is without a doubt the worst. Well, I say the worst. It's one of the most interesting and most satisfying effects to pull off, but it is, as you can imagine, pretty brutal to land in a run. So if you get it like, nice and early, like you'd hope, it's um, it's worth going for. But otherwise. You know, it's, uh, it's a big old time sink. First try, exactly. <laughs> hey, stop right At least there. this time I didn't undo like all my binds like I did at ESA. <laughs> Oh, there's a bit of a quirk with this door where you've got to be mid-air when you go through it, otherwise you get stuck in the floor. Don't ask why, I don't know, but <laughs> it's uh, one of the many quirks of this game. So we're going to pick up those blood bags from that fridge, which is going to be um, a part of our blood economy, which will uh, help us with the final fight. We're just going to be spamming the splints, which... Oh, I've not actually really explained this, I probably should. So on the left, we've got our health bar, and then on the right, we've got what is essentially our mana bar. I hope that helps. <laughs> I'll give you a real world example as well of why um, we typically try to lower the FPS to 60 for certain things like environmental uh, reasons. So the source engine, it doesn't like high frame, uh, frame rates at all. Here's an example of opening a door on uncapped FPS. It's pretty slow, right? Now, if we change it to 60 FPS, loads faster the reason for that is unknown to me but um with high fps you can get stuck indoors and lose runs that way it's very fun it's um, not irritating or to lose a run to something like that <laughs> okay well we about broke even with like the time saved with that jump so it's not the end of the world this is still like a legitimately good time why is health blue in this? That is a fantastic question, especially considering we're vampires. You'd expect both bars to be red, right? You know, blood and all that. Let him cook. Okay, so... Quick lore or explanation for why we're here. Um, we're here to find the Malkavian Primogen uh, Alistair Grout. And this is him. He is, he's been staked and killed, so unlucky, I guess. And now we need to go tell LaCroix he's indeed dead. So now we've got to escape this burning mansion that uh, that character that we just spoke to, the uh, mad German uh, Bach. He's a vampire hunter. He knows we exist. He's got this uh, thing. Oh my. Dude, my movement is pretty rough, but it is what it is. Yeah, actual skill issue. <laughs> okay. Let's see. 
Uh, so, with the news that VTM V2 is actually coming out very well, soon relative to what we've um, had to wait. <laughs> Look at me. I'm not sure how that will be as a speed run. I mean, I personally believe that. There is a degree of immediacy. If someone asks, you know, should you run VTM V? Yes, if you've played the game casually and you know you enjoy it enough that you want to actually try and speed run. It's a better casual game than it is a speed run, if you ask me. Okay, museum. Uh, so the only thing we've got to do here is collect the Ankara and Sarcophagus and we're gonna learn. Oh no, it's not here. But uh, we will get pointed in the direction of someone who will know where it is. Yeah. And then we've got, after this quest, the biggest sequence break that I think um, people that are familiar with this game will either appreciate or almost even feel like robbed by. Oh, I don't need... Uh, I'll just go to the thing as a... Yellow. So we'll take that. And this little section is finished, which is nice. <clears throat> right there. Oh, it's also worth mentioning that Bloodsoak is communion as a discipline. Whilst it does have like a little hitbox on the bird, I am an um, oh, I <clears throat> no one. Oh, don't. when you use it on a target, it will, t if it kills, it if it's a normal human, it'll typically kill them instantly. Um, and it will send a bat towards you, which will also replenish your blood pool. So using that way you can to like try and keep blood economy. Oh, cool. That's right, he's over here this time. The I Up is uh, something I that you've got to be mindful stone. of throughout the run. The I want you to the not Hollywood's best fine. Okay. So over to Hollywood. We've now got uh a very nice skip. Ooh. Which will put out the entirety of the Hollywood quest line and the Nosferatu Warrens. But the setup is a little, not so much jank, it's just, um, it can be pretty troll. It relies on uh, luring an NPC called Romero a very remote location. So, we grab this barrel behind us. That is technically out of level. And we're going to bring this with us. Those familiar with Half-Life runs are going to be like, okay, I see where this is going already. <laughs> right. Uh, so, we've got to lure Romero, and he can be bit of an arsehole. Like, there's no other way of putting it. He is very true the one he wants to be. If you want a good run, then he'll kill your run. If you want a bad run, then he might just troll you anyway for the shiggles. So we're going to take this barrel. I'm going to lurk. Oh, yeah. So he can use a knife or a shotgun. We want him to use a knife because he will actually chase after us. <laughs> this was the original card zombies. <laughs> I suppose um, it's worth mentioning there is actually like a small side quest you can do in this area where you fight off against like a horde of rising undead for five minutes. It's um, I, I want to say the first time I did it, I, I, I did beat it first try. Not to brag or anything, but kind of a big deal. Okay. There, like, like I said, there's a lot of luring that you need to do with this guy for this skip. It's, it is worth it though, like, no matter how you spin it. He's pretty far back there. Alright, come on. Man, he is trolling. You can um, like start like start to feed on him twice and throw him away, and that should cycle him back to his knife. Okay, come on, buddy. He's still running behind me, which is good. Okay, he's on shotgun now. So we could have put that uh, that barrel there. Oh, hey, buddy. That's actually pretty close to where I need you to be. 
there's a very specific lineup that we need because the angle on this is pretty important. Okay. Come on, bud. He actually tried trolling me by turning away as well. So, we use Spectral Wolf to force collision. Come on. And then we're going to use uh, the barrel to sort of help us clip through the terrain. Oh, not like that, though, because <laughs> that's out of bounds. Okay, that's fine. Uh, do, 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 do. This is why we have a save. And that's a pretty risky save, too. That was uh, super low on blood there. Pretty awkward. You know in, um, is it Half-Life 2 where you have to like transport the gnome throughout the entire game? And you put him in like the, uh, the rocket. Gnome Chomsky or whatever it was. <laughs> That's the kind of thing we've got going, going on with this barrel. That really did not work, huh? There we go. So what this is going to do is force us into this crawl space, uh, which will send us straight to the end of the Nosferatu uh, warrens. And uh, even, like, if we were to, like, do the, the warrants in Hollywood, like, if we were speedrunning it, it would still take the better part of, like, you shouldn't what, say, 12 minutes? You should. Like, at the top level, so it is a really considerable, uh, considerable amount of time that we save. Where? Oh, I know. The Quaid, even f you up for the goats out <laughs> of course. Right, on to the last part of the game. So, that was good old... Gorgeous Gary uh, Golden. He's going to send us to Chinatown. Originally, there would be a um, series of quests that we need to do there as well, but instead, we've got another secret break, which is thankfully nowhere near as uh, awful to do as <laughs> the previous two that we've shown. Nice, clean movement. Getting those hops, but oh, I say that and then I go and get stuck on a ledge like that. <laughs> Getting the hops uphill is, um, it feels great to do, but... So the sequence break for Chinatown is very simple. There is a tree that does not have collision that you can stand on top of. It's supposed to, but, um, in this patch, like, the game, in its rawest form, just does not have that. And we can use that to, uh, climb onto the hook that Min Zhao is on. Chinatown has not aged very well, though. I, like, I'm going to be real. Like, I've... We do explore all of Chinatown and all the side quests that are available here in the 100% quest log. But, um... It is definitely... To say a product of his time is probably maybe a little... forgiving, but... You know, I don't... Like, I'm going to be real. Like, some of the, the voice acting is not lazy like that's the wrong word but it's um it definitely plays up to like stereotypes anyway <laughs> uh so that was the sequence break we jumped on the hook and then we jumped over that fence we are now actually well inside the chinatown and barracks now this part of the game is very much like the oh okay you're on the war path towards the end of the game which we shouldn't be really here yet but that's why we can actually fight back against the equation Move this out of the way, source engine by the way. This pad right in front of us, that's indicated by the glowing lights. If you don't make a quick save and quick load before it, uh, you can't actually move out of the way and you have to take the long way around. Reasoning? I couldn't tell you, but that's just how it is. <laughs> okay. So we're going to say goodbye to our lockpick after all this time. Into the final area. Drop down here. And now we've got a puzzle which um, actually genuinely confused me uh, because I'm a fool. So I think it fooled most people. Um, we've got to collect these 4J statues which will um, unlock this secret room that Ming Xiao is hiding in. 
And uh, we've got to actually crouch bunny hop throughout this area because the roof is pretty low. Ugh. And if we land on the traps, then uh, those blades come out and they will instantly kill you, which we do not want. So movement in this section is um, pretty tight and really punishing if you don't get it right. You know, you hold to a very valid point about the uh, lockpick weighing the same as a vampire. Oh, oh man, that's unfortunate, but we did not die and that's all that matters. Uh, we will obfuscate one more time. Ooh, this is... I don't think I can sneak past him. Okay, there we go. A few seconds wasted, but whatever. So, Jade Dragon in that one. Jade Cat here. Jade Elephant. Oh, and Jade Brain. And now the confrontation with Ming Xiao. It's going to get pretty loud for a moment because um, we're going to be spamming a lot of spells. Lacroix. Yes. Lacroix. Lacroix. I hope you. And all we're going to do is hit with potent, which um, will definitely help us with our damage, and spam Burr and Beetle. Try not to frenzy. Nice. Actually, really clean fight. She can troll pretty hard by, like, constantly staggering you and knocking you away and everything. Okay, so we're coming up to time. Um, we're decently underestimate, but nothing egregious. Thankfully, uh, I did give, what, 40 minutes or whatever it was. Very uh, well. So it could actually allow for things to go wrong. <laughs> okay, and time. <laughs> All right, GG. So... Not bad. Day 3, 53 soon with low removal. Um, that's fate. still like third or fourth place or something on the leaderboard. Like, mine. that was legitimately still a good run. Um, just to quickly answer a quick question, chat. There, there was no HP bar there because um, when you load into a map with full frame rate, like unlocked frame rate, it, it like delays loading up the menu. That's all that is. It um, took me a while to actually learn that. Anyway, yes, that was Any% percent Nosferatu for Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It's um, a very fun run, especially if you're not waking up at uh, 3 in the morning to do it, and you don't wake up in a panic thinking, oh, shit, I've missed my time slot. <laughs> um, yes, it's a better casual game, though, so if you haven't played it, I highly recommend it. It's one of the most popular RPG games ever made. It's got some of the best writing um, ever really, to be totally honest. Um, thank you to Ekdysis for having me on for his Hot Fix show. It's been a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I'm ready to hand it back over to you guys. Sounds good. Before you do go, though, one, do you have any shout-outs you want to give? And two, if anyone wanted to find you on Twitch or anywhere else, where can they find you? Uh, Shout-out to everyone in chat, really. Y'all are, are goated. Um, if people did want to watch uh, me personally, then I can be found at, um, at twitch.tv slash vice uh, I do stream mostly speedruns of this game. Um, I will be taking back record this year. Trust me, bro. <laughs> um, <laughs> I do speedrun of games like Devil May Cry 5 and uh, Faith and things like that. But yes, if you are interested, that's where to find me. And that is, that's everything. All right. I do want to say a thank you for doing the run there of Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. It's always fun to watch. I guess vampires just kind of zoom through LA. It's uh, interesting to see them. I've, I've also just been attacked by my... Well, not attacked by my cat. She just wants to be seen. She's uh, a cutie. Yes. <laughs> very much it. <laughs> She's adorable. Uh, anyway, thank you. thank you once again. Uh, for everyone else here, uh, we are going to be setting up for our next game of the night. We have two more for you of uh, Vampire Fun. Uh, so don't go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs>